Okay, I've got sound. Okay, praise the Lord. Welcome to Bethel Church and to the Bethel Church Sunday morning service. Uh, we welcome you to uh, watch and hope that you will be uh, stay with us until the very end. Uh, this is an informative message, one that the church is not really uh, teaching as often as it should. Uh, the message we're teaching today should not be for old Christians, but uh, specifically, but it for should be for new Christians. Uh, a, a new Christian should learn this message in the first six months of being saved. Uh, and if us older people and older Christians who have been Christians for a, a couple of years or five years or 10 years or 20 years, uh, if we haven't figured this message out, this is something that we need to move forward with in our Christian life. So Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Finally, brother, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you'll be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist the evil day and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, in addition to all taking up the shield of faith, which you will be able to extinguish half of the flaming darts of the evil one. Is that what that says? No. It didn't say half. It, say half. it said how many? All. all. We can extinguish all the fiery darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. With this, new, with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus for everyone listening, wherever they are in the world and whatever time it is, that they're listening. I pray right now that everyone listening will listen to the omnipresent voice of the living Christ by the authority of Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that the Holy Spirit draws everyone under the sound of my voice to be hungry to hear this message. I command every demonic spirit to be broken and crushed by the powerful blood in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I pray for individuals listening right now to be delivered by the Spirit of God and that this leads them to freedom in Christ and forgiveness. May the Holy Spirit reveal the evidence needed for many to come to the saving faith in Jesus. Spirit of God, be operative in the listeners' lives today as they hear this message and may the lost embrace and believe in Jesus today. Save them in the midst of hearing this word today. Block all interference as they listen. May all who are yours today be able to understand this message. May it penetrate our hearts and minds. May that we fully understand how to do effective spiritual warfare against the enemy, God. In the name of Jesus, we ask for this message to have an impact around the globe. Bless hearers today, Lord. Bless each one that is here. Bless each one who is hungry for your word. Oh, Lord God, we need your help. We need your direction. We need the strength to carry on. We need the direction to carry on to make sure that we're going in the right direction. Father, you're a wonderful God. 
we praise you. We lift up the name of Jesus, that name that's above every name. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayer. Thank you for all that you've given us because you've said that in your word that you've given us everything we need for life and godliness. Now, Lord, thank you for the struggle. Thank you for the times that we get hurt because we reflect back on them. And we come to you and we come to the cross and we ask for the, the strength and the power to carry on. We praise you and we worship you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Psalms 30, 139, 23, and 24 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if any wicked way is in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. The psalmist says that he wants God to search him. Every move of God, every time that God has had men come in a powerful way, they come in repentance. The first thing that God wants from us is to search ourselves and to ask God to search us and point out to us our shortcomings. I have them, and we all have them. And we, sometimes we let them get the best of us. Because you see, uh, Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So we have an, uh, our marching orders. We have the word of God telling us in the direction that we should go. God has made it very clear that there is a method to doing what we need to do. First, we need to search ourselves and let God search us and, and comb over us with a fine-tooth comb in order that everything that is not of God be pulled out of our, our life. Then we look at James chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, and so humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for our, your loyalty is divided between God and the world. This is one of the biggest problems in the church today. Our loyalty is divided between God and the world. I didn't hear. Yeah. This is the this is the problem of the church. This is the problem of believers. We're divided between our what's in the world and, and God. And the world is oftentimes winning. We see very often the people who love the Lord, they start losing their grip. They start slipping. They let the lure of the world start pulling them away from their loyalty to God. The purpose of my instruction, Paul says to Timothy, is that all believers would be filled with love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and genuine faith. Our motive for carrying out the Great Commission is our love for Jesus Christ. Our motive also for carrying out the Great Commission must be love for other people. We must love the person that stinks in our nose. We must love the person who has not trusted in Jesus Christ. We must love them enough to be willing to step out of our comfort zone and carry forth the message of Jesus Christ. But we have to go in power 
to go powerless, it, that means we're helpless. That means that our message of the, of the cross will fall flat. But there is also another reason our message of the cross falls flat. It's because the God of this world has blinded the eyes and the ears and the minds of people in this world today. They cannot hear because they, their ears are stopped up. Satan has plugged the ears. So what do we do? We have our marching orders. We have been told to purify ourselves. We have been told to draw near to God and to resist the devil. Hmm. But, 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 I don't know how. But uh, I, I, I don't have power over demons. I don't have power over these stopped up ears. But, uh, but, 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 there is no but. Listen to the words of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Stay dressed for action. Keep your lamps burning. And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes in and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at the table, and he will come and serve them. Jesus Christ gave us power to trample on the enemy. We have the power. Did we not see that, sing a song this morning, that there's power in the blood? How many of you believe there's power in the blood? Did we not just sing victory in Jesus? Is there victory in Jesus or not? Is the word of God the word of God or not? Amen. Is it true or is it not? If it's true, then it behooves us to live our life as if it's true. It behooves us to walk boldly, not only to the throne of grace, but we must walk boldly into the world, and if people don't like it, our Savior will like it. It is up to us to be bold at the Walmart. It's up to us to be bold at the gas station. It's up to us to be bold wherever we are, whenever we're there. When God shows you somebody and and God says you need to step over and pray for them. It could be that they need a healing. We don't see our lives being lived out like the, the book of Acts. The book of Acts had the men of God healing people. The book of Acts had God, uh, God had men casting out demons. We don't live the book of Acts, but the book of Acts is the pattern for the church. It's time for the, us as believers to step back into the book of Acts and begin to see people healed. We've had people healed right here. We've had people that we've prayed for. We've gone to people's houses and prayed for people, and we have seen people healed of cancer. We have seen people healed of of lumps and bumps, and we have seen broken bones healed. It's time for us to act like we believe that. It's time for us to get it in our heart that we believe that. It's time for us to be the people of God. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. We don't have a lot of time. This is not going to be a message of doom and gloom. This is going to be a, a message of victory in Jesus. And we need to know that the armor of God is a very part, important part of that. And we need to know and learn how to get the armor of God on. And now let's talk about the armor of God. The whole passage that we read is full of marching orders. 
It's full of commands. The first command is finally be strong. Finally. Finally be strong. Finally, we're right here today. Finally, it's time for the church to step up. It's time for the church to be strong. It's time for us to live out the book of Acts. It's time for us to finally figure out what the armor of God is all about. We're supposed to be strong in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says, be watchful. We're supposed to be watching. Are you watching? When you walk into the store, do you recognize the spirit that is on people? We walk into the store and people are just people. They're just doing their thing. They're, they're concentrating on the, the can of peas or the hamburger they're going to buy or a bag of potatoes or they're looking in the frozen food section. They're not paying attention to us. And we get to see them in their natural element. And, and do you think that the demons don't watch us in our natural element? They, they got mo more of us figured out than we'd like for them to figure out. Well, look, we have lived life long enough that we ought to be able to see the spirit on people. Not always, the spirit on people is not always what they try to project. Because we have a lot of people who are projecting one thing when there's something else under the surface. And we need to be watchful in the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to stand firm in our faith as we are watchful. We need to act like men and women of God. We have no further excuse. We have the complete entire word of God. We need The men need to be men and the women need to be women. <coughs> And you know what? People condemn us if we speak in a stern voice. But I want you to know in Mark chapter 9, God says that Jesus said he spoke to a demon in a little boy in a firm and strong voice, and that demon came out of him. And Jesus said, don't come back. We're to be strong. Our women are to be strong. The, our women, strength in women looks a little bit different than strength in men. Our women are to be strong. Our men are to be strong. Our, our men need to search the scriptures daily to see what strong is. Our women need to search the scriptures daily to see what strong is for women. One of the strongest things for women is Proverbs 31. Uh, if, if a woman can carry out all of Proverbs 31, she's, she's almost a superwoman. 2 Timothy 2.1 in the ESV says, Then my child be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. We cannot go in our own strength. We cannot go in our own power. We are to use the strength that Jesus Christ has given us. That is unnatural strength to men. Men can be men. Men can spend all their time at the gym and they can get their arms pumped up and they can get their legs pumped up and they can uh, they start looking unnatural a little bit, don't they? You know what? We can, we can have strength, but the biggest strength we have comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. The power of God. The inner strength. The strength of His might. Ephesians 1, verses 18 and 19. Having the eyes of your heart enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which He has called you. What are the riches of His glorious inheritance in the saints? 
And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his great might? I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living no matter what men may say. We have people today who come to church and they go out and they declare that God is dead. There is no one who is created that ever has the authority to, to declare the Creator dead. Our Creator is powerful and we need to work and operate in the power of God. Romans 13, 12, the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm. We need to have it on. Romans 13, 12, the night is nearly over. Are you listening? The night is nearly over. The day is near. What day? The day of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let us discard the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. We operate, we see people in the church who the, the claim the name of Jesus Christ, who are operating and using the deeds of darkness. We need to discard the deeds of darkness. We need to walk in the light of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 6, 7, by truthful speech and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left hand. I could, pre I could preach on that one verse. We need Ephesians 5, 16, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Let me, let me just help you out a little bit. The days are evil. Evil is in Spencer County. Evil is in Kentucky. Evil is in the United States. Evil is all over the world. Evil is here like we have never seen before. It's time for us to realize that the power of Christ, the, the blood and the power of Christ is stronger than anything that Satan has to throw at us. Having on the armor of God is the way we get there. Stand firm against the schemes of the devil. One of his most successful schemes is to make us believe he doesn't exist. We have a whole lot of people today who have trusted in evolution. Evolution is their religion. Evolution is a religion and it's taught in schools. It's more of a religion, it's just as much of a religion as any other religion. It takes faith to believe that a school bus would just suddenly find a, a, a piece of iron out in the yard one day and that piece of iron transforms itself into uh, a bolt and it, it, it just has threads start forming on this piece of iron. Uh, and here's another piece of iron and it just happens to form itself into a nut and it suddenly has threads that matches the threads on the bolt. Now, if you've got the faith to believe that, you've got a lot of faith. Uh, and, and more pieces of iron come together, and some of it has yellow skin. And it's, you know, we get through, and all of this stuff, metal comes together, and pretty soon it's got a, a school bus sitting there. <clears throat> and then you see rubber start to come up out of the ground and forms into tires. And you say you're crazy. Evolutionists don't believe that. Yes, they do. We may admit that evil is real, but then deny that behind it are demonic forces bent on our destruction and death. A lot of people in the church might believe in evil, but they don't believe in the demonic forces that are waiting for us. We may deny the devil's true nature by turning him into a harmless cartoon character with a red suit and a pitchfork. 
cartoons are full of them. Jesus said he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. John 8, 44. 2 Corinthians 2, 11, so that we would not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. Jesus told us through the, the voice of Paul that we're not to be ignorant and outwitted by Satan. But we are. We let him daily. We let Satan get us. We, we got our sleep at the wheel sometimes and he gets us. Satan uses another trick. He wants to drive us to hopelessness. How many times have you felt hopeless? How many times have you laid your head on the pillow at night and said, man, I just wish I wouldn't wake up? We get hopeless. We look at our situation and we can't see out of it. That's Satan. Fiery darts. Fire, can you say fiery darts? Fiery darts. He wants to tempt us to be proud or to think more highly of ourselves than we should. Man, mm, just look at me. Got my black vest on, got my white shirt on. I got a purple tie. Man, I am it. Woo. No, I'm not. Jesus is it. It is so easy for us to think that we are somebody. But then the truth is, we're nothing and nobody without Jesus. He wants to trouble a believer with blas blasphemous and pure, unbelieving thoughts. Can you say fiery darts? Fiery darts. Haven't some of you been lifting up holy hands in prayer, been pestered with such a, 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 a crowd in the Right here in the middle of church, any church, your church, our church, you've been right in the middle of church and Satan's been throwing thoughts in your head. It happens. That's the way he works. He wants to tempt us by our carnal friends and relatives. Look, man... I know it's Bible study night, but I come to see you. Just stay here and stay with me. That's a temptation of Satan. He wants our friends to keep us out of church. Appearing as an angel of light. Satan does this. Now look, you, I know you've prayed about this. And I, here's a, let me give you a verse of scripture. And this verse of scripture just fits your situation. Just go ahead. You know that job that you was thinking about and been praying about? Just go ahead and take it. That's a good job. Man, just think of, you know, you're going to be working with Christians there. You're going to be getting paid more money. Let me tell you something. Satan can send somebody as an angel of light to steer you in a place that you have no business being. I don't care if there is Christians there. I don't care if it's like chaos where you work. You may be the only Bible somebody reads. Satan causes some sickness and disease. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Did you hear that? He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Satan come to steal, kill, and destroy. He makes people sick. He can use people's illnesses against their family. If you want to hurt somebody, hurt somebody you love. How many times have you seen that in the movie? Some evil guy, he takes pleasure in getting a guy, and you know, 
that happened in the Bible. One of the, the last king of Israel, when the Babylonians come in and captured them and took them over and took them to Babylon, they captured the king. You know what they did? They killed his sons right in front of him, and then they put his eyes out. The last thought, the last vision that he had was of his sons being killed. That's the way Satan works. Satan works against our family. Satan works against us. Man, I just know I, I've got cancer. I just know God ain't going to heal me. I just know I'm never going to get well. If God didn't tell you that, close your mouth. Start putting trust in Jesus. Listen to the word of God. We have the power over the enemy. The blood of Jesus is where it's at. And it, it, if, if we don't think we have power to, over the enemy, we won't operate that way. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Man, I, I just, man, I just, I want to tear that guy up, man. He's been, he's been on my last nerve for I don't know how long. I'm just going to go tear him up. I mean, we all have a favorite politician we love to hate, right? <laughs> Look, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the powers and against the world forces of this darkness. We're wrestling against spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. And they've been in your house. I heard a guy say yesterday, I was in my house. And something hit me. I heard somebody say the other morning, I felt something in the night hit me on the foot. They've been in your house while you're asleep. They attack you in your dreams. Therefore, therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. These are evil times. We need every piece of the armor of God. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Last man standing will be the Christian who has on the armor of God. Take up the full armor of God so that you'll be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand, stand firm. Stand firm. Don't give an inch. Standing is maintaining our ground. Are you maintaining your ground? Is the enemy pushing you back? Or are you pushing the enemy? Do you let the enemy get into you? Do you let him take over your thoughts? Are you standing firm? That means not yielding. Not give up. Not fleeing. The grand aim of the Christian soldier, soldier is to stand firm. The grand aim of Satan is to get you to turn tail and run. The grand aim of the demons is to discourage you. We need to have girded on our loins the belt of truth. Isaiah 11, 5, Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The belt was not for cosmetics. It had the important work of holding together all of the armor. Without the belt, the soldier could not move effectively. Likewise, truth is essential in our spiritual battles. Dishonesty, cheating, injustice, 
will not let us overcome evil. We struggle in these areas. Dishonesty, cheating, and injustice. Every one of us have to face these questions daily. We need to be truthful. Truthful, truthful, truthful. How many of you caught yourself telling something that wasn't 100% truthful this week? This past week. That is the that that is what the belt is all about. It's about truthfulness. Well, we just slide a little word in here, a little word in there, and um, it's be okay. No, it's not okay. Conformity to fact or reality, exact. I looked this up in the Webster's Dictionary, 1828 Webster's Dictionary. Honesty of man, excuse me, conformity to fact or reality, exact accordance with that which is or has been or shall be. The truth of history constitutes its whole value. We rely on the truth of scriptural prophecies. God did not lie to us. We had over 300 prophecies of Jesus Christ, this first coming. There's more than that about his second coming. God cannot lie. We need to be like God. Veracity, purity from falsehood, practice of speaking truth, habitual disposition to speak the truth. That's a good habit. That's something to be good, at, to be habitual at telling the truth. That needs to be a part of our life. If, we, if, uh, if we're not habitually telling the truth, we have left part of our armor off. Every time you leave a part of your armor off, you are open to the attacks of the demons. It is time. We have to realize that the belt of truth is not the belt that I have on today. The belt of truth is truthfulness. We have to remember that. The armor of God is not something we get up and put on every morning. It's a lifestyle. Sincerity. A good conscience. If we're not truthful, and we're going to have a, a conscience that tells us, oh, you uh, that word you used, Maybe that was a little misleading. Well, the next thing we got to do is put on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate was very essential to protect in the body from the neck to the waist. Righteousness is essential to overcoming evil. Purity protects. If you have evil in your closet, the enemy will ferret it out and use it against you. If you have evil anywhere, if, if your life is not righteous, remember we said a little bit ago that the demons have figured out what you're thinking and what you're going to do. They know about you. They've been watching you for a long time. If you're trying to, well, this one little thing, I'm just going to put it down here in the bottom part of my pocket. Nobody will see it there. I'm a put it in a little box and I'm going to put it in the back corner of the closet. Nobody will see it there. Satan will find it and he'll use it against you. Righteousness as used in the scripture and theology in which it is chiefly used is nearly equivalent to holiness. Righteousness and holiness the first thing that I would notice here in the, uh, excuse me, uh, it includes a call of justice, honesty, and virtue with holy affections. In short, it is true religion. This is true religion. To be righteous and holy. To take on the nature of Jesus Christ. 
now we got to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I don't know about you all, but I would not be able to walk from here to the road barefooted. <laughs> My feet are too tender for that. We need to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you know the gospel? Do you know that the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? We have other gospels being preached that is not the gospel. We have the gospel of prosperity that's being preached. It's not the gospel. That's not what we shot or put, our, put on our feet. We put the gospel of Jesus Christ. Injured feet make it impossible for the soldier to stand strong or to attack. According to Weist, the word translated preparation is used in classical Greek in the sense of a firm foundation. This fitting is a symbol of one's feet upon which one stands. We need a good foundation to, do, to protect the rest of our body. The first thing that I would notice here is that the gospel brings peace. We were once at enmity with God, but when we come to Christ through the gospel, we are now at peace with our maker. We are at peace with Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us. Do you have on the gospel shoes? The gospel of peace prepares us for combat. If you know how you got saved, then you can boldly proclaim to somebody else, this is how I got saved and this is what happened to me and now my life is different than it used to be. If you know how you got saved, you can tell others. You know that person at the grocery store or Walmart or whoever that the Holy Spirit said you need to go over and pray for them or talk to them. I just want to tell you a little story about my life. I come to Jesus Christ one day and this is how I did it. Amen? In addition to all taking up the shield of faith which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Remember those uh, thoughts that we were talking about a while ago? Those flaming arrows? The shield of faith. It's not just something we talk about. It's not an imaginary piece of equipment. It is our faith. It's what is in our heart toward our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do we believe the word of God? Do we believe it when Jesus told us you have power to tread on serpents? You have power to cast out demons. Do you believe it? Oh, no, wait a minute. That was back in the book of Acts. The church today has blinded themselves. The church today has not talked about the power of the enemy. The church today has not talked about the the book of Acts. We are not living out the book of Acts today. We're just muddling our way through. It's time for the church to wake up. It's time for the church to stand up. It's time for the church to be the church. It's time for the church to be the book of Acts church. It's time to tap that lady or that man on the shoulder and explain to them, uh, God told me that you're struggling with something and maybe you need to be healed. Maybe uh, I can see you're really sick. Remember going in the grocery store and watching people and seeing the spirit that is on them? If we are drawing near to God and he's drawing near to us and we're, we're walking in the, with the, the armor of God, we're going to have the power of God in our life and we're going to be able to see the spirit on people and we're going to be able to walk up to them and, and if we believe the Bible is true, we believe the book of Acts is true, we can pray for people and they'll be healed. The church is not seeing people healed. The power of God says I, God has the power to heal. The Word of God says God has the power to heal. The book of Acts says the men of God heal people. Not only did they heal people, they casted out demons. 
How long has it been since you've been somewhere and you saw somebody, you were in a group, and somebody came through the door and a, the group just wilted. When somebody comes through the door and the group wilts, pretty pretty good understanding that something, some spirit came through the door with them. We need to be able to feel the spirits and recognize the spirits. The shield of faith. Do you have faith? At first, is our place of faith above all does not mean that the most important, but to be above or surrounding all. The shield can protect the entire body for it's movable and can be directed at any attack, no matter from where it comes. <clears throat> Secondly, the protection by faith. Comparing the shield of faith shows that faith is a great protector. It stops the darts of evil from hitting the body. Faith defe defeats the enemy. The church today is not operating with the shield of faith. As a church body, we're not operating with the shield of faith. Somebody comes up and tells you about so-and-so. Have you heard about so-and-so? Well, no. What did you hear? Well, you know, so-and-so... Uh, I saw them, and they were talking to so-and-so, and, you know, he's married to so-and-so, and she's married to so-and-so, and they were spending a lot of time at work talking to each other, and they do an awful lot of laughing and giggling and whispering amongst themselves. The shield of faith says the body of Christ takes their shields, and they form a circle. They form a wall. They protect each other. And instead of you listening to the gossip about somebody, you, if, if that's not the person you know, then you need to stand up and say, well, that's not the person I know. Right. We need to be a body of faith. Our faith needs, we need to hold our shields up and protect each other. Now look, if the scripture says we're not to receive an accusation against an elder, except about two or three witnesses. Now, if, if somebody is in the church and you got two or three witnesses that are telling you that something's going on that is wrong, then we need to go privately and talk to that person. But look, we need to take up the shield of faith. We need to not only take the shield of faith and protect ourselves from the flaming darts of the evil one, when you're in your bed at night and the discouragement hits, you're to take up the shield of faith and, and defend against those flaming arrows. But as a body of believers, we hook our shield of faith together and, and we protect the body of believers from the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now, this is one of the biggest weaknesses we have. We have a, this is something that we're failing to do. When we fail to do this, we open the door for the enemy. The church has not been standing up. It's time for us to be men. It's time for us to be women of God. What are the flaming arrows? Let's talk about these flaming arrows. Have they hit you? Satan identifies our weaknesses. Invasions in your mind and your space. Depression, despair, anger, discouragement, lust. Man, I, have you seen that that new Ford? Man, this I gotta have me one of them new Fords. I just well, I'd give my eye teeth for one of them new Fords. Satan tempts us. Satan defies the authority of God through sin and rebellion and tries to get us to do the same thing. Satan wants you to, to defy the authority of God. 
Satan wants you to defy, defy the word of God. He, he did it himself, and he wants you to do it. Satan blinds the minds of unbelievers. He blinds their minds. He blinds their eyes. He stops up their ears. He will make us repulsive to unbelievers. Oh, you, there comes so-and-so. All they want to talk about is God. I will, let's get, get out of here. Now, I'm telling you something. If that's your reputation, when so-and-so gets in deep, dark trouble, guess who they're coming looking for? Right. Keep on keeping on. Keep on having the armor of God on. He undermines the authority of God's word. Half God said. Did God really say that? What about this stuff in the Bible? Uh, there are, you know, we all have questions. People ask questions to try to tear us down. They try to pick things out of the Bible to, that makes the Bible look stupid. They're undermining the authority of God's word. Satan loves to quote scriptures to trick us up. Satan divides. He wants to divide us all. He wants us to find something wrong with somebody else, and we. He wants us to focus on that thing that we found wrong. He wants to blow it up and make it a whole lot bigger. When you take a balloon and you draw a face on it, and you blow that balloon full of air, that that face gets a lot bigger. It'll be distorted. It don't look the same way. That's what Satan wants to do to us. He wants us to to pick something that somebody's got that's a flaw in their life, and he wants us to focus on it. And pretty soon he's using that to divide us. <coughs> Satan rises up against God's people to keep us from doing God's will. And the helmet of salvation. Got a new word for you. Virginet. Anybody know what virginet is? Well, it's a fancy helmet. A virginette is in the 16th century is a fairly typical of the helmet soldiers wore in Paul's day. Some had face masks on the helmet. Without the helmet, the soldier could be easily killed. Salvation protects the soul from death in the combat of evil. We have to have the helmet of salvation. If we don't have salvation, we don't have the power of God. We don't have we if we don't have the helmet of salvation, we can't have any other the pieces of the armor. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword was the only offensive part of the armor stated here. Comparing it to the word of God shows us the great importance of the word in our combat with evil. The word of God is our sword. That's what we use against the enemy. Luke 10, 19, Jesus said, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Jesus gave us the power and the authority. And the church has... Oh, they, they said, no, that was back for the book of Acts. That's not good for today. I'm telling you what, every bit of the word of God is good for today. Amen. We have the authority. Jesus gave it to us. We need to walk in it. Psalms 18, verse 2 and 3, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. First John 4, verses 1 through 3. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. 
By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. We are in evil times. We are not warring against people. We are warring against spirits, spiritual wickedness in high places. We are not, this is not a war against other people. We forget that. The armor of God is not something that we take on to hurt other people. The armor of God is something we use to defend ourselves and to help protect other people. The armor of God will help us to do the work of the ministry. The armor of God will help us fulfill the Great Commission. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things, making disciples of them. The armor of God is what we use to carry out the Great Commission. It's what we use to deliver people. Are we going to live in the book of Acts? Are we going to walk in the power that Jesus gave us? Or are we just going to surrender? Now there's somebody listening today and said, man, I, I, don't, I don't know about all this. I haven't, I haven't trusted in Jesus Christ. I'd like to get this armor. I'd like to have this armor. Today's the day you can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. <clears throat> and if your whole household believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, your whole household will be saved. And that should be the goal of every one of us, to get all of our household saved, and that includes our clan. That includes the people that we're associated with. That includes everybody that we know that we say that we have a friendly relationship with. And it also will include some that we're not so friendly with. We need the power of God to go and witness the cross of Jesus Christ. Do you have the power of God in your life? Do you have Jesus Christ in your life? I'm asking you today. I'm asking you. Of those of you who are watching by Facebook or wherever you are in the whole wide world, I'm asking you today, look at this Jesus. He was born of a virgin. He lived a perfect life for you. He shed his blood and died on a cross and paid the penalty for your sin and my sin. Will you trust in Jesus Christ today? Will you put your faith in him and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved? I'm asking people, wherever they are in the world, whatever time it is in the world, whenever you're watching this, I'm asking people who are watching this and hearing my voice to decide today to trust in Jesus, to decide today to put on the whole armor of God, to decide today to start fulfilling the Great Commission. Many of you who are watching are here today. You know somebody that needs Jesus Christ. That's the reason we need the armor of God. We are living in evil times. Let's pray. I come against the evil spirits that are trying to dissuade people at this very moment. I say that they're crushed and they have to be dissolved by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. I say that they have to leave and leave everybody alone who is hearing this by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Then I pray, Father, that those who are watching and those who are listening will surrender their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ that they will fully understand that Jesus died, paid for their sin. He shed his blood. By his stripes we're healed. And Father, I pray for the church. 
I pray for those that, who are the body of believers. I pray, Father, that we will stand up and stand and not give up territory. Let us purpose in our heart that this goes no further. That we're not going to give up any more ground. But we're going to take ground for the cause of Christ. God, teach us how to be truthful, how to have righteousness, how to have faith, how to use the word of God to defeat the fiery darts of the enemy. Help us to be proficient in the scriptures. Help us to understand that people are dying and going to hell. They're dying, and when they take that last breath and their soul departs their body, <clears throat> if they haven't got Christ in their life, they're going to go into a burning hell. Oh, Lord God, help us to get that in our spirits. Help us, Father, to stand on the Word of God. Help us to be the soldiers of the cross. Lord God, we need you to work in lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, Brother Don, you can cut it off. <clears throat>